Macula Society London Conference, 2013. Dr. Hannah Bartlett from Aston University. Nutrition and Supplements. I'd like to thank the Macula Society for inviting me to speak again. It's always a real pleasure um, to speak to patients and um, I always get lots of really interesting questions at the end of my talks which often help um, to focus the direction of our research in the future. So um, I'll try and keep my talk brief this morning or this afternoon and um, allow um, plenty of time for some questions. So as you know, I'm going to talk to you about nutrition, and I would love to stand here and tell you that you all need to eat two bars of chocolate every day. <laughs> but sadly, that's not the case. <laughs> and uh, I have emailed Helen in advance to tell her that you all need to have some boiled spinach and a sardine for your lunch, so <laughs> I should be very disappointed if I see anyone having any treats. <laughs> I'm going to start off... Um, by talking about why people think nutrition is important for age-related macular degeneration. Then I'm going to go through some of the developments in the clinical research um, that has taken place over the past few months. Um, I'll talk a little bit about supplements and also a little bit about the foods that we think are important um, to be consuming if you have or are maybe at risk of AMD. So to start off with, um, nutrition is important because it's important for our general health that we consume lots of fruits and vegetables and lots of antioxidants. Within our bodies all of the time, a process called oxidation is taking place. And oxidation results in the production of things called reactive oxygen species. And these reactive oxygen species, or ROS, are very damaging to cells of the body. So the trick for our bodies um, is really to try and achieve some kind of balance between the amount of re reactive oxygen species that are being produced and the amount of antioxidants that are present within our body. We need to try and maintain that balance, otherwise the cells and tissues of our bodies um, become damaged by the reactive oxygen species. Now, unfortunately, our eyes are particularly prone to damage by these ROS. And that's because the tissues um, within our eyes are continuously exposed to light, and light is an oxidator. Also because the retina at the back of our eyes is highly metabolically active. So that means that there are lots of chemical processes taking place in the retina all of the time. And those produce lots of reactive oxygen species. Within the retina there are also lots of polyunsaturated fatty acids. And they are very susceptible um, to damage by oxidation and help can, can be involved in the production of reactive oxygen species as well. So the eye and the retina are very prone to oxidative damage. And this is why, for a long time, researchers have been interested in the role of antioxidants in trying to delay the onset or progression of age-related eye diseases. So if we think about antioxidants, we're thinking about um, substances like vitamin C and vitamin E, um, and also minerals like zinc, which are essential for the um, efficient functioning of various antioxidant enzymes within our bodies. About 12 years ago, the results of a very large clinical study called ARIDS, that's the Age-Related Eye Disease Study, were published. And this study was a large, multi-centered study that took place in America, involved about three and a half thousand people. And those people um, were used to investigate the impact of a nutritional supplement on the progression of AMD. And what the investigators found was that those um, participants in that study who were taking a combination of vitamin C, vitamin E, beta-carotene, 
and zinc actually experienced a reduced risk of progression of their disease. So in people who already had earlier stages of AMD, the, their risk of progression to sight-threatening forms of the condition was reduced by about 25% if they were taking this combination of supplements. So this was really exciting for patients and for eye care professionals. But there were some problems with that formulation. And those included the fact that during the course of that study, um, beta-carotene was linked with an increased risk of lung cancer in smoking men. And also that the levels of zinc in this formulation were quite high, and people were worried that this high level of zinc could cause tummy upsets, for example, in, in patients. So that prompted people to look for, for other ideas. And um, while this study was taking place, it was, a, it was a long study that took place over a number of years, um, some other nutrients came to light, and these were called lutein and zeaxanthin. And I'm sure most of you have heard of lutein and zeaxanthin. These are carotenoids. They're found mainly in dark green um, leafy um, vegetables. They're not produced within the body, so we only get them from what we eat. And um, they are selectively absorbed at the macula. So that means that um, our bodies have adapted to specifically transport um, lutein and zeaxanthin from our gut when we eat them in our food to the back of the eye. And this made people think, well, perhaps there's a reason for that. Perhaps lutein and zeaxanthin are um, very useful in that location. And we do think that that's the case. We think that lutein and zeaxanthin act as a kind of sunscreen for the back of the eye. So they filter out short wavelengths of light, blue wavelengths of light, that are particularly damaging and are particularly likely to produce lots of oxidation and reactive oxygen species. And we also know that in cells of the eye, like the retinal pigment epithelium, which I know has been mentioned already this morning, um, that lutein and zeaxanthin have a potent antioxidant effect as well. So they kind of scavenge up these reactive oxygen species and get rid of them for us. So all of this prompted the development of a new large clinical study called AREDS-2, and AREDS-2 was a very similar sort of design. It was a, a very robust clinical design of study. Again, it took place in the United States. And, um, but this time, they changed the formulation a little bit. Um, they um, asked some participants to take lutein and zeaxanthin instead of the beta-carotene in the supplement. They also asked some participants um, to take some fish oil as part of the formulation. And some participants took a reduced amount of zinc. It was a very complicated study. Um, but the main sort of thrust of the results was that replacing beta-carotene with a lutein and zeaxanthin didn't do any harm and in fact produced a slight, even better result um, than just than having the beta-carotene in the formulation. So in other words, people who took the formulation with lutein and zeaxanthin instead of beta-carotene had an even more reduced risk of progression to sight-threatening forms of the disease. So that's quite an interesting, exciting result. Um, because it means that people who have smoked in the past or who do currently smoke uh, don't need to worry about taking an AREDS formulation. They also found that taking fish oil as part of the supplement didn't seem to make any difference. Um, and they found that reducing the amount of zinc didn't really make any difference either. It didn't make any difference to the risk of progression of the disease, but it didn't really make any difference to the risk of side effects either. Um, so it's always quite difficult to um, 
uh, to produce a sort of black and white um, uh, uh, guidance strategy from these things. But in general, it seems that lutein and zeaxanthin are useful in combination with other antioxidants, um, and that perhaps taking a lower level of zinc, um, a more sort of normal recommended level of zinc in a supplement, isn't going to have any detrimental effect. So now I'll move on to talk about supplements because I often get asked to, to um, lots of questions about supplements. As you all know, there is a wealth of different um, supplements on the market. Okay, um, there is real, really no um, stringent. Um, um, uh, monitoring of these nutritional supplements, which causes a problem for health professionals and for patients. It's very confusing um, to know which supplement you should take. The results of this ARID2 study now make it easier because it could be that if you decide you want to take a supplement now, you can have a look um, on the shelves at the pharmacy for um, a product that has the ARED2 formulation in it. And you can be fairly confident that that is safe for you to take even if you have smoked in the past. Although I always say that if you are going to embark and take a nutritional supplement, it's wise to um, consult with your GP before doing so because some of the constituents of nutritional supplements can interact with prescribed medication. It's important to include 10 milligrams of lutein. So if you are going to buy a supplement, please make sure it has at least 10 milligrams of lutein in it. Um, because studies that have been carried out, smaller studies that have been carried out with smaller amounts of lutein haven't shown such a beneficial effect. So if you're going to buy a supplement, please make sure it has at least 10 milligrams of lutein. What about if you want to change your diet? What about if you don't want to spend lots of money on supplements, um, but you want to try and modify your diet um, to um, do the best that you can to reduce um, the risk of um, your AMD uh, progressing? Well, really, the only foods that contain high levels of lutein and zeaxanthin are spinach and kale. There's lots, I know, it's a shame. <laughs> I wish I could tell you something different. <laughs> there are bad tidings. Um, you, will, you may read information in the press um, or from other sources that says that things like um, mangoes and um, apples and um, guava have um, high levels of lutein. It simply isn't the case, okay, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> If you want to try and consume 10 milligrams of lutein, which is the amount that we suggest um, you should be aiming for, um, you would need to consume a cup of cooked um, spinach or kale every day. And that's not everybody's cup of tea, is it? <laughs> I'd like to stand here and say that I eat a cup of cooked spinach every day, but I'd be lying. <laughs> so, um, if we to, to achieve the levels of lutein intake that might be beneficial through diet alone. Okay? Um, if you do want to increase your consumption of, of spinach and kale, and obviously, you know, eating um, vegetables, particularly green leafy vegetables, is going to be beneficial for your general health, not just for your eye health, then make sure that you consume them with some fat. Okay, so that's the good news. Um, you can have your spinach creamed, if you like, um, because the fat helps the body to absorb the lutein and zeaxanthin from within the spinach and kale. Okay, so a little bit of good news there. <laughs> Um, we, we thought that fish oil might be um, beneficial um, for retinal disease because um, some of the structures within the retina contain um, essential fatty acids which are found in fish oils, but ARID2 didn't find that to be the case. However, some larger um, uh, population-based studies that looked at the diets of people with and without AMD did find that people who consumed higher levels of fish were at reduced risk of AMD. Um, so it could be that if you're going to have some spinach for your tea tonight, have it with some sardines or some salmon 
and that's certainly not going to do you any harm. I'm going to finish there, if that's okay, and um, just see if anyone has any questions.